chairperson of IEEE RAS North Cap University Student Branch in collaboration with Asma Basley, chairperson of IEEE RAS Higher School of Science and Technology of Hammam South Student Branch. We proudly present you today's webinar on Applied Robotics and Machine Learning by NUSO. In this webinar, we would learn how the future is going, what will be the next big thing, what is the actual market demand for technologies, how can we build a breakthrough solution, what all things a fresher requires to get into the mainstream robotics and machine learning streams. Now, I would like Asma to speak a few words about Neoito. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Upshita. I'm Asma Basli. We are really delighted to have you here today with us. So basically, Neoito is a software development company working with startups and scale-ups around the, uh, across uh, the United States, United Kingdom, and Scandinavia to deliver products that are used by millions across the globe and used by some of the biggest companies in the world like Facebook, LinkedIn, IKEA, etc. Also, guys, I'm going to send you in this chat box a feedback form that you will need to fill uh, in the end of the session. Uh, it is a question for everyone uh, to fill it and collect, to, to collect your certificate. To collect your certificate. I would I'd like to give uh, the word to Ipshita to talk about our speaker, Mr. Ali Mahroof. Our speaker for the event is Mr. Ali Mahroof, sir, from Neoito. Mr. Ali Mahroof is an entrepreneur, research, and a tech aficionado with more than six years of experience in leading multiple innovative projects in AI, ML, robotics, and IOD. He is passionate about robotics and is an avid reader and occasional writer as well. Currently, he is the AI and IoT solution architect at Neoito, leading a team of enthusiastic developers to solve complex problems and build groundbreaking solutions. Please welcome Mr. Ali Maruf, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Asma, for the yeah. Thank you, Shadan, Asma, for for the nice introduction. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's. Uh, there are, there are time difference in between two countries, right? So we are we are from two different continents, right? Yeah. Uh, we, there are people from India and also yeah, from, right, yeah. Yeah. So over there, it's been Finish. after afternoon, right? Yes. So <laughs> good afternoon to all from there, and good evening to all from India. Uh, um, before I uh, just start, let me let me present my screen. Okay. So, can you see my screen? I love you. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Already, we got an introduction about the Neo ITO, and uh, right now we are going to discuss about applied robotics and machine learning. Uh, don't take it as a kind of a big thing or serious thing. Uh, I'm looking for an interactive session. Uh, so, so. Before we are just starting, uh, the insight uh, that I need to provide in front of the audience is the three key things. Uh, one is be interactive, and if you have any any questions uh, or anything related to the topic or or anything you want to know from my side, you can just raise your hand or raise your voice. I'll clear it at that time itself. Uh, uh, and. And that will make uh, from my side. At the same time, I'll provide my experience uh, from my side. And uh, yeah, ask questions. Then the third thing is like keep in touch in, inside the company, which is uh, uh, currently which is all around the world. And uh, uh, I'll share the details about the community because the community is really huge. Uh, we have uh, like all the sectors from. Uh, mobile application uh, development, uh, web application developments, and AI, IoT, machine learning, uh, data science, and we have uh, a different streams for each. Uh, it's it's a kind of uh, uh, like supporting team. So I'll I'll give uh, the more information at the end of the conversation. And um, yeah. So. Um, 
the general content will be like uh, how the current thing is working which which is mainly about the company and how we are working inside the company and how we are serving the clients uh, what are the crucial problems that we are currently solving so it's kind of an uh, the discussion will be more into like a layman concepts which means uh, uh, like how we can resolve the problems through the applied robotics and where all the possibilities that we can look into and what are the key skills that we need to develop in order to get in there. So a brief introduction into machine learning, robotics, and as uh, is to get into the uh, robotics application, okay? So about the uh, overview, I have started my career in back in 2017 uh, in USD Global. Uh, at that time, uh, in 2017, IoT was the boom kind of things. Uh, it's, it was a hot topic at that time. And I started my career after uh, my college degree in, in electronics engineering. Then uh, I switched into uh, AI uh, because uh, the IoT is generating the data, and machine learning is the one which processing all these data. And after that, uh, I have been curious about uh, uh, robotics uh, and 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 the applications of, of it. Um, so uh, that is the career that I go into. Uh, and uh, after UST Global, I start my own uh, company. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, Tensorbot Innovations. Uh, we are build multiple solutions uh, scalable into into two billion dollar. Right now, uh, we combine that company with Neo ITO, and currently we are working together in that sense. Uh, right now, we have a 12 team, 12 people members in our team, which is dynamically skillful and a dedicated research wing uh, inside Neo ITO for the future developments. Uh, mainly, these are the three verticals that we are looking into uh, uh, in machine learning. The main uh, mainstream is computer vision. Uh, then inside that we have multiple sub process then a deep learning nlp so these are the key things that market demand uh, uh, right now and when it came to the uh, um, hardware part or or the or the uh, sensor and actuator parts uh, we have a dedicated team in embedded development focused on ARM-based microcontrollers. Uh, uh, and then IoT, when it came to IoT, we have our own dedicated uh, cloud platform, uh, which will be uh, stand as a uh, as a broker, uh, kind of uh, uh, Adafruit. Does anyone hear about Adafruit? Hello? Are you guys hearing me? Adafruit is a, is a kind of a forum on which we are having some sort of applications as well as the coding part on a user interface, kind of a UI. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's actually, uh, it has a UI and it, ha it it is actually a broker. They are providing services to us. We can use the Adafruit platform uh, for communicating in between two devices. We can send the data. Normally there are MQTT uh, uh, server and they are helping us to communicating in between two different devices. Also, they are providing libraries. So we are building that kind of platforms in IoT. Then in, when it comes to the robotics, uh, that is the crucial point that right now we are uh, talking about. Uh, we are focusing on rows. Um, then then uh, the, the next level is a kind of an application of those kind of things. Uh, uh, in, inside the ROS itself, we have a like um, uh, 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 integration of AI and ML, and lastly, we are into ISEC. Uh, I'll give you an intro, a, a kind of an uh, um, intro to all those platforms later on in the discussion. Are the products that we are looking for that I'm, I'm just skipping over. For that so uh, yeah this is one of my first question what does mean by the intelligence before we are getting into machine learning or artificial intelligence i just want to put out a question um what does mean by intelligence can anyone just give a quick crisp of your opinion i'm not just asking questions it's just and i'm asking for opinions what is your yeah, your idea about intelligence, what is it? Okay, so um, I think that intelligence is 
the pace or the speed in which somebody can process something or a concept or a phenomenon and understand it and maybe use it or exploit it in in any application or yeah i think that everybody can do something but the difference between people is the pace the speed mm -hmm. and that's where intelligence comes okay great great malek Dwight. thank you for your reply and uh, something yeah. uh, problems something problem uh, problems big problems problems Sophistic, yes sophisticated problems mm -hmm. okay yeah i think uh, intelligence depends on how you can um uh, deal with any kind of situation you face is the ability to, ad uh, to adapt to any given situation yeah the thing is getting more more uh, refined kind of yeah ability to adapt to the situation uh if you are making it more crisp ability to adapt based on the change in data so the situation is actually uh, uh data for example if you are sitting somewhere there are different kind of data in front of art whether it is a pictorial data or whether it is a sound data whether it is a like failing everything is data right yeah so the thing simple thing is uh, ability to acquire knowledge and apply skills uh, as earlier said uh, uh, getting knowledge from the surroundings and apply skills skills means the replication of what we are doing as we have uh, as as uh, few of you said it's kind of a uh, different kind of process kind of uh, listening planning a self awareness understanding and there are multiple things right so uh, does anyone know about this guy have you ever seen this in, in photos or, or any anywhere does anyone know what who is it Uh, his name is John McCarthy. Uh, he is the one who coined the name uh, artificial intelligence or the, or the machine learning uh, in, into the computer, computer programming systems. So um, then uh, the key, uh, usually we'll hear about uh, these kind of keywords, right? Machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, are you guys going through all those things and what is, uh, have you understand what is the difference in between these three, three keywords? So normally, this is the main differentiation in between these three top and three key skills. Artificial intelligence is the world set, and machine learning is a subset. Deep learning is an, another subset, which is really core into it. Uh, normally, the machine learning concepts are like algorithmic system. Uh, where uh, there will be an algorithm, uh, we can apply input to that algorithm, and we'll get output. Uh, simply, if I'm saying an example about it. Um, are you guys going through the linear regression? Hello? Yes, sir. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of an, uh, like, for example, um, we can easily uh, draw a chart uh, against, uh, for example, if you are simply saying that, um, a, lean, uh, a, a, um, a chart for, for a straight line, right? Hello. One is simply, yes, simply if, if you are saying it's simply one uh, one variable uh, 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 linear regression. So it is. I don't know what is the equation for line. It's, yeah, it's it, exactly. Why is equal to mx plus c? So uh, what we are doing over there is y is the variable that we, we need to identify and uh, we, we will have an x value. So if you are plotting y uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in, in vertical axis and x in, in horizontal axis, we can plot a line over there. So that is an algorithm that, uh, uh, that uh, we call it linear, linear the machine learning. 
yeah machine learning play uh, machine learning based so machine learning is purely kind of an algorithmic process and when it comes to the deep learning deep learning is a bit complex there are uh, it's we can actually compare that into our uh, uh, original brain the brain of a human human being uh, normally uh, the deep learning begin from the neuron and at the same time our brain uh, the end base of the brain is are also neuron right i'll i'll get into that after uh, after after few slides about uh, deep into, into neuron and and all of these things and uh, right now my uh, machine learning data science it's become uh, uh, like really really uh, really really burn topic it's it's really a hot topic over here so um uh, like one of the key reason uh, 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 why that is really hot right now is these are the few few reasons uh, which means uh, the availability of data right now we we are we have a like huge amount of data as i told you earlier in the beginning of 2017 it's it's the, the boom of uh, iot and over there we generate data simply if you are saying iot uh, there are everything for example our mobile app mobile phone itself is an iot device uh it's generating data and sending data to to somewhere and to into the cloud and it's registering over there every data for example if you are traveling from one place to another place uh actually google is recording everything our uh, traveling path uh, the pictures that we are uh, shot from there and and if we talk to someone uh, from there everything so all these data are stored over there and right now we have a lot of data and the next thing is the computational power right now we have huge computational power in the beginning uh, a, a 5 gigabyte uh, or or an 8 gigabyte uh, um, uh, gpu was kind of a big thing but right now uh, we have a, a huge kind of uh, uh, hardware potentials right now and uh, the next thing is like an industry support right now there are a lot of open source well, op- companies are providing open source systems into into the uh, into the society to contribute more technical values into the system so that's why right now we are in in the boom of uh, machine learning or 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 uh, ai things then um, i just want to quickly get into what we are doing over here in in, in uh, machine learning and what are the core applications of robotics um, so normally uh, in inside our company uh, uh we we have right now we are developing uh, three different products and uh, i'll share one of that product details over here just give me a moment So guys can you see my screen right now no sir yeah so here we do yeah so uh this is one of the product that we have launched recently uh the product is uh, a bit crazy uh, so um like uh, can anyone guess uh, what is this just any 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 wild guess while looking into the product it seems yeah. like a computer vision application having a, some sort of a, a training exercise uh, capturing something sir yeah exactly exactly uh, so uh, the thing came from uh, after the hit of coronavirus so we have been uh, uh, developing this for f- past one year so when when uh, the corona uh, get hit all the uh, all, all, all the humanitarian life over here in in in, in, uh, in our system so generally uh, uh, the public places like uh, gyms and and all are closed right so uh, uh, like one of our uh, one of our client uh, came up with an idea to build um, 
uh, a solution uh, which uh, which needed to be uh, uh, um, they, they actually came up with a problem they want to uh, uh, they want something which is replaceable uh, uh, in terms of an um, i try okay so normally when we go to the uh, gym there will be uh, there will be trainer over there and uh, uh, he usually inspect us inspect our movements and he he will tell us okay you have to do this in not not in this way you have to do the push up in right way so after that uh, gyms are closed and there is no option to to individually monitoring each persons and uh, the guy who came uh, with this problem he, he is an athlete. Uh, he is an an Olympic athlete. Uh, uh, so uh, he want something really professional, which should be used and in, in, uh, which which should be used by the athletes and their trainers. So the trainers uh, uh, should not uh, needed to be there when they are training. So we came up with a solution. Uh, uh, it's it's a small cute robot. Uh, which will be able to identify. Uh, 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 there'll be camera and it can track persons uh, and track their motions movements and uh, they can record the data of uh, like 17 body points uh, then uh, there will be a backend algorithm uh, which is a machine learning model which is predict the comparison in between uh, for example uh, if, if it is a push-up uh, or, or or any any exercise forms uh, we have a uh, like uh, generated data for each exercises for example a pattern of data and uh, the system, which means uh, the, the board will observe the user and it will it will evaluate his process and generate scores for that. So that is the solution. And right now the product is in market and we have an application for that. Uh, uh, in, in that application itself, there are two different kinds of processes. One is an, uh, like AI generated exercise patterns. And uh, there are uh, there are applications which we can use for uh, for uh, doing exercises. But the difference over here is we have a system which will be able to monitor us and give feedback to the mobile application. Uh, and at the same time, the trainers can evaluate each person's individually about their moments. So that is the solution. So that is one of the product that we have uh, uh, right now completed, and we have been working in multiple products in the pipeline. Uh, when it comes to the uh, robotics, uh, uh, it's it's uh, really crucial to get into a uh, market. Uh, at the same time, if we have the potential, um, definitely there are millions of opportunities at the, at the same time. Normally, from my experience, uh, there will be two kind of people are getting into uh, uh, this uh, this sector. One is uh, someone who is purely with uh, uh, passionate persons, who is uh, kind of an who is kind of a curious mind, who is always dreaming about Elon Musk uh, uh, or, or kind of an Iron Man uh, fan. And another one is like a deep researcher who is uh, who is uh, playing with data and and all. So um, I hope there are there are uh, these kind of people, uh, right? So you guys are uh, from IEEE Rask. Rask, can anybody, anyone like elaborate that? Robotics, uh, uh, Robotics and Automation Society. Automation Society. Oh, great, great. Uh, so uh, and and uh, can I just uh, understand what you have been doing in there? And specifically, have you done anything, uh, in, uh, anything before, uh, kind of and, uh, like uh, exhibitions or projects or something like that? Uh, we usually before COVID, we usually used to have online workshop related to robotics, like we, you know how to assemble, how to uh, gesture control robot based on Arduino. We had uh, LFR workshops, and after COVID, we usually have webinars mm -hmm. related to robotics. Post COVID. Oh, great, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so when it came came to the serious things uh, in in robotics itself, um, there are multiple streams. Uh, pardon me. Can you hear me? There are some kind of a noise over here. Am I audible? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So uh, when it came to the uh, real life applications, uh, uh, as I as I shown you before, uh, 
uh, uh, which is used to uh, you, uh, track the exercise. Uh, we have been using NVIDIA products over there. And uh, have you guys gone through uh, Jetson Nano? Anyone, does anyone gone through Jetson Nano? NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Sorry, sorry, what is the grid is? Uh, it's NVIDIA Jetson Nano. It's, it's an SBC kind of uh, like Raspberry Pi. Okay, okay, okay. No, never, never. Can you please explain more about it? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, you, you, right? Hello? Yeah, please, sorry. Have you got Pi? Sorry, you are on the roof. I couldn't hear you. Are you speaking to me? Uh, or? Can you hear me right now? Hello? Yeah, I hope so others can also. Okay. So, uh, uh, did you guys go into Raspberry Pi? It's an SBC, kind of an yeah, yeah. Uh, like Arduino I, board. Yeah. It's the second year students did Raspberry Pi. Asma, did your college too? Okay, so you, you guys are better familiarized with that, right? More or less. Yeah, yeah great. So uh, it's it's a Linux platform, uh, which means uh, Linux distro into it. And uh, at the same time, we can do all the process in a single, uh, single board computer. So uh, the one of the key feature over there is we can uh, simply, simply integrate our cameras and all the devices into that. But uh, one of the core problem over there is it has uh, only uh, um, it has only uh, um, CPU processing capacity. So when we came into a computer vision kind of processes, um, it's it's really uh, really hard to process all these frames. Uh, which means, for example, if you are capturing uh, a video, for example, if it is in a live stream, consider the application of um, that exercise tracking robot. We need to track a person uh, in real time, and we need to generate values uh, for each frames. Which means, uh, in in our camera right now itself, if I'm uh, facing you, my camera is recording uh, uh, kind of 28 frames per second, and I need to process. Right now, the, the thing is processing. For example, uh, it's it's eliminating my background and taking my visuals itself. So, which means in a, each frames. Uh, the thing is, uh, the system is processing these 28 frames and uh, taking uh, uh, output from that and give feedback to the uh, monitor, which means it will take the entire visual from, uh, from my camera and process it and neglect the background from it in each and every frames. If, if there is something missing, for example, if I move my hand uh, in a vigorous format, there are miss, uh, some kind of a missing over, happening over there, right? Which means it's missed the uh, processing and capacity over there. So, which is purely running on the browser, that's why it's happening over there. So, when we are building an applied level robotics, which means an industrial graded system, we need more, uh, uh, like more hardware cap capability. So, in that sector, NVIDIA is generally providing. Uh, all of you are familiar familiar with NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA GPUs, gaming system. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, yep. Yeah. So right now, NVIDIA is providing a platform, uh, which is Jetson. Uh, it's an SPC single board computer, which will be uh, which will be like we can use in terms of uh, like a Raspberry Pi, or it's it's a kind of an, a single board computer with a minimal uh, a size and uh, which has a full potential of an uh, of a computer uh, of a, uh, a like scale uh, graphics computer. Uh, which will have a dedicated GPU of uh, 4GB and a 4GB of CPU. So right now we are building products in NVIDIA uh, NVIDIA devices, uh, which will be capable of uh, providing solutions in, in in industrial level. For example, um, uh, like like as I show you earlier, uh, that's a like critical uh, uh, process oriented uh, uh, problem where we we shouldn't miss a frame over there. The key uh, key solution over this is computer vision, and on the back end, we have multiple models for generating scores uh, uh, for that exercises. So, if you are taking the process, the main process is computer vision. 
So uh, as I told you before, uh, if the person is moving uh, faster, we need more frames. We need to capture more frames. So over there, we are utilizing Jetson Nano for that purposes. So you can go through the Jetson uh, uh, Nano and you can like explore different kind of processes. They have an, a like um, a software development uh, kit, uh, which is like uh, uh, Isaac. Latestly, uh, recently they have provided Isaac new features. And um, like uh, we, we built the uh, product that I show you early is based on Isaac. Uh, they have uh, and and we have an, another product which is completely dedicated for for the uh, um, sanitizing purpose, uh, which means uh, 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 right now uh, we are getting huge uh, traction in terms of uh, autonomous uh, sanitization uh, in hospitals and and hotels. So, so product on on that uh, which is an uh, like uh, sanitizing robot. Uh, which is fully autonomous and uh, uh, fully uh, like a self-defense system based on ISIC. Uh, you can go through this uh, and and in between that, if you if you need any clarification on anything, you can just ask. Okay. Because right now, I don't know where you guys are standing uh, in terms of uh, topics which I'm seeing. Uh, and uh, right now I'm, I'm talking from uh, my side as a kind of, I'm opening uh, what I, I'm currently working. And if you have any, any questions related to anything, you can just open, open it up, okay? Uh, please, can you explain uh, Raspberry Pi? I okay. know it's uh, related to Arduino. Uh, actually, uh, Arduino, let me, let me find if there is an Arduino with me. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is uh, this is somewhat similar to Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is somewhat similar to Arduino. Arduino is uh, more basically an embedded device, a simple embedded device. And uh, uh, Bilal, have you gone through the Arduino? And have you done anything on Arduino? Yes, sir. Most of us uh, are no. aware of Arduino. Okay, great. So uh, generally, Arduino has uh, an IC. Uh, it's an integrated uh, chip, uh, which, is, which is based on Atmel, Atmega uh, 328P, uh, which is a microcontroller. And we can integrate different. Uh, it has a like, uh, communication system, for example, uh, which will have an uh, like ADC uh, and analog pins, digital pins, and all. And generally, we can connect different kind of sensors into it, and we can process something over there. For example, if it is a digital signal, yes or no kind of signal, it can take that signal and process it inside that and give an output. For example, lighting an LED. Okay, based on a switch, if I'm pressing over here, it can light an LED on the, on the next side, right? That's a simple process of how Arduino is working. But when it came to uh, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, generally we, we categorize uh, Raspberry Pi into SBC. SBC means single board computer, which will be only have a single board and it will have an ARM Cortex-7 series process, processor, which will be somewhat similar to the processor which we have in our mobile phone. And uh, I think you guys are familiarized with uh, Linux uh, 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 software, right? Yes, oh, yes. Hello. So normally, we are using a Linux uh, uh, OS inside the Raspberry Pi. Download that from that side, and we can use it. So if you have an uh, like Raspberry Pi with you, and if you have a monitor and a keyboard, you can just directly plug into the uh, um, RPI and you can use it as a computer. And if you need a scalable solution, uh, something which is needed high performance, you can use it over, uh, use, use a Raspberry Pi for that. Because we can directly plug in the USB camera into it and, uh, uh, um, and and different kind of uh, so 
that the Raspberry Pi is. Um, the Raspberry Pi is a computer which will be able to integrate sensor into it directly through the GPIO pins. GPIO pins means general purpose input output pins, which is somewhat similar to the analog and digital pins in Arduino. Okay, so you can do this similar thing which which can be done in an Arduino and we can do more than that kind of an like we can deploy a machine learning mode into that. Uh, and for example, right. So there are a lot of open source uh, uh, codes uh, and and uh, and uh, instructions in in, in the uh, in, in in the cloud system where we can explore, uh, which will be able to do multiple things. For example, you can build a simple robot based on rows. So I'll I'll just give you an introduction about rows also. Rows means robotics. Uh, hello. Yes. Yes, we yes, can yeah. hear you. Yeah, before I'm getting into that, uh, how many of you have gone through uh, Raspberry Pi? I just want to make it clear. Yeah, I have done. OK, uh, Nathan is there. A part of it is not completely. OK, great. So what have you done on that kind of a, uh, what have you done on that? Majorly kind of a. Uh, Basic kind of a data analytics, like uh, having a data on the Raspberry Pi board and uh, uh, processing some basic regression and uh, ref uh, re uh, refining the data for a particular process. Okay, great, great. So, uh, which co uh, which code base are you used? Uh, are you done that on Python or through Python only? Yeah. Yeah, great. So uh, that is somewhat similar to how we are using a computer, right? Yeah, completely. Yeah, completely. So um, when we came into uh, uh, robotics, uh, pro, uh, robotics, we need something uh, kind of an OS. Right now, for example, if if, you are, if I'm taking an example, uh, let's consider the uh, Arduino itself. If uh, uh, like uh, if you are uh, building, uh, what? Okay, if, if I'm building uh, um, a self-balancing robot, consider a self-balancing robot. If I'm going to build a self-balancing robot with Arduino, uh, what will be the process over there? What are the things that we need? Uh, normally we need uh, an actuator. Actuator will be like a motor, a, a, a simple gear, geared motor. And we need a sensor. And we need a processing unit, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The processing unit is our Arduino Atmega uh, uh, microcontroller. And uh, uh, the sensor will be like uh, a gyroscope uh, accelerometer combination sensor, which will be able to uh, detect the inclination and, and acceleration, right? And there will be uh, uh, an actuator, which will be with the motor, which will be act based on the value on the sensor. Actually, Inside yes. the uh, Arduino, what we are doing is we'll take the data and we'll process it and we'll calculate, okay, if the threshold is matching or not. If the threshold is matching, uh, we'll turn the mot uh, motor to right or left or forward or backward to adjust the value of, from the sensor, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So. I'm getting this. Um, so um, that is the uh, that is the basic uh, application of a basic uh, robot based on the Arduino. So when we came into a higher level uh, applied robotics, for example, as I shown you before, that's a that's a robot. Uh, or or for example, let's say uh, if you want to build a Jarvis. Okay, I have something with me, but uh, it's not in a showcaseable mode right now. Um, if you want to build a Jarvis, uh, do you mean, do you guys got what I mean by Jarvis? Have you gone through the uh, um, Iron Man movie? Yeah, Iron Man. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So there is a Jarvis, right? Uh, so uh, a robot which will be always keeping with with uh, uh, Tony Stark. Actually, uh, Jarvis is an like a full fledged uh, system which will be able to uh, communicate. It's actually a framework. Okay, 
So uh, if we want to build something like that, which will be able to interact with multiple sensors, multiple actuators, and it would be able to take actions and, and all kinds of things, think about it. OK. And even make it simple, let's consider us uh, uh, human beings. We are doing multiple things. For example, uh, if I'm picking something from my table, it's it's a process, and I am actually uh, processing some information. Information means a visual information, and uh, at the same time, haptic information, haptic feedback from my fingers, and uh, I'm coordinating all these things and taking decisions based on that. Right? Yeah. 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 So that is consider if you are building something like this based on an Arduino. It will be really complex because inside the Arduino, there is no framework for communication. It's actually what it is doing is it's uh, if you are uh, like we are simply listening to a particular uh, port, port means uh, a pin, simply a pin. If you are if we are listening to a particular pin and we'll access the data and we'll process that data and give feedback to, uh, to that data, for example. Uh, in in uh, Arduino sensor, we'll always look into uh, um, a pin high or pin low based on a switch. So, uh, yeah. or or we can get into that example, previous example that we are said about the um, uh, balancing robot. Okay, so uh, the uh, the Arduino will always listen to the uh, data from the uh, uh, sensor, which means uh, the gyroscope sensor, and based on that, it will take an action. That is only happening over there. So what happened if I'm adding more sensor into it? Consider about I'm adding an ultrasonic sensor into the Arduino. And at the same time, I'm adding an another sensor, infrared, infrared sensor into the Arduino. And I'm adding an another sensor, which will be a mic uh, into the Arduino. What will happen? The Arduino won't be able to process all the data, I guess. Like it's yeah. not very powerful to to treat all those informations. Exactly, exactly. And it's not able to process all the information together and it won't be able to take uh, a particular action based on that. So the uh, taking action is another case. It, the first case is it won't be able to process all the information. Um, like then we came, we introduced an, another hardware that is Raspberry Pi, which will be able to uh, process much more complex data such as, for example, uh, let's consider our uh, laptop itself. So right now I have a mouse with me, and I'm moving my mouse uh, around the screen, and I'm clicking it. And if I'm uh, at the same time, I can type on my keyboard, right? At the same time, my camera is uh, listening to me, and, and, the, uh, and the mic is recording my voice. So there are multiple multi-tasks is happening over there. So uh, if we need to uh, coordinate all these tasks, we need something called on a backbone, right? So that backbone is actually the uh, operating system. So if you are building something really huge, uh, kind of a Jarvis kind of a robot, we need uh, a backbone system. That, that is what we call, we need a uh, robotic uh, operating system. So right now, the robotic operating system is an open source uh, uh, open source framework, which will be able to coordinate all the multiple sensors. You can add uh, tens and hundreds of uh, sensors, and we can collect all these data, and we can process it, and we can we can uh, take action based on that. So you guys go through the saying, uh, for example, for the Windows. Windows, Windows is actually an uh, um, operating system. For, for the Windows, it's Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. Uh, in that way, for uh, ROS itself, there are different kind of versions or distros. And you can utilize that for building a big uh, robot. And in next time, uh, if you are building more crucial, ROS is kind of an, like an, uh, we can build hobby projects with that. Uh, which will be able to somewhat similar to uh, Jarvis. Uh, actually, I have one, as I told you earlier, I have one uh, one device with me. It's a small robot, uh, which will be able to communicate. For example, 
camera it has computer vision it has uh, able to communicate uh, with us which means it has an nlp capability and it can take actions based on that so generally if you are seeing uh, what happen if we uh, combine a computer vision with an alexa and what happen uh, based on that action uh, if a robotic hand is doing something as if now if we uh, if you are using our mobile phone uh, uh, like there will be like siri uh, in, in our mobile phone right so if i'm saying okay siri make a call it will make a call right at the same level here we have a board which if i see uh, that are a perimeter and find if there is any any cup through the camera and if the system identify okay uh, there is a camera in the frame it will focus there and it will uh, like move into nearby that cup and it will bring those things so if we want to build something like that we need a solid framework that is rose and you guys can go through it uh, so if possible can you showcase your uh, model uh model actually <laughs> the thing is uh a re renovation process is happening in my house and all the things is shifted uh if it is possible i'll i'll post a videos in in the uh, uh um app, uh in the uh, mob, uh in the whatsapp group is that fine actually i'm not in the whatsapp group so, so... Okay, I think uh, the team can do those kind of things. Uh, I think Apshida or 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 uh, uh, I'll need to that. I'll put. Okay. So uh, this is a rose. Uh, rose is generally for a robotic operating system. We can build multiple uh, uh, multiple things with rows. You can build a small a humanoid robot, uh, and you can build an entire Jarvis with rows. Um, Is so, it open source? Is it uh, is it a kind of open source something or how it would be? It's it's a completely open source. So we can take it and we can modify it. We can build our own products based on that. Right now, the uh, semi-scale industries are using Rose for their small-scale applications. Okay. Can you name one or two applications? Like actually, uh, I'm from a process industry. And we are currently look. Uh, we are currently doing some sort of POC with computer vision as well as with this kind of a uh, Raspberry Pi and other. Uh, uh, even for the with this GB, GPUs, like for computer vision. So as you just told that for Rose, can you just give me a minute, like how we can utilize this thing as well? Uh, yeah, sure. For example, if you are building uh, a robot uh, which needed navigation and at the same time which need a computer vision process. For example, as I told you earlier, a sanitizing robot. Okay. Uh, so in that uh, time, uh, what generally what people do is uh, okay. Uh, if I'm seeing computer vision, I'll I'll build a code in Raspberry Pi for computer vision. Okay, I build a Python code and I run it. Then that's it. Then after that, uh, if I, if you are collecting a GPS data, that's an another patch. It's okay. an, like completely discrete process. So what Rose is doing is. Rose has uh, like uh, a node for everything. It's kind of an like it's a kind uh, of an API, you can say. Uh, not kind of an API. It's it's an it's actually an OS, like um, like like the Linux. So it's 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 actually mid layer OS. Now, normally we call it a mid layer OS. So which can be installed inside the Raspberry Pi. Uh, for example, we can download the Rose. Uh, inside the Raspberry Pi, and we can integrate multiple sensor into it. For example, the GPS camera and all. Even simpler mode. Uh, if I'm saying, uh, have you gone through the MQTT? Yeah, I'm. I'm well versed the MQTT protocol. Yeah. So normally in MQTT, we are using uh, a, a, a publisher and subscriber method, right? Okay. Yeah, there will be a node, and we'll be publishing any sensor. For example, a sensor can publish a certain uh, data into that node, and at the same time, there is an another actuator which can subscribe mm -hmm. to that node. So those who are okay. subscribing to that node, they'll get the data. Those who are publishing to a particular node, they can publish that. So those okay. those processes are independent, independent, but there is a one core process which will be uh, combining all together, right? Understood. So in the same way, Rose is doing. The same process 
uh, there is there will be like a ROS nodes, uh, same as uh, MQTT nodes, M sorry, same as MQTT broker. ROS node is like, uh, we can create node. For example, I can create a camera node. At the same time, I can create an uh, like GPS node and I can create mm -hmm. uh, an, another node for ultrasonic sensor. And uh, in, while we are writing the code, I'm, I'm uh, calling all these nodes and there will mm -hmm. be a like, publisher and subscriber for each nodes. Okay. So they can simultaneously uh, publish data into it and at the same time they can uh, access the data. So why, and I'll, I'll make it more clear, if you are using something or if you are building a robot based on Raspberry Pi, which is dedicatedly for some core purposes, what we are doing is we are building over uh, the uh, Raspbian, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Raspbian. So Raspbian is our main. Raspbian is always. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there, there won't be anything which will be supported for our purpose. So we need to write the entire code. For example, we need to oh, write. Yes, sir, so, so you mean to say for rows, we do have a kind of a all kind uh, major uh, sort of uh, uh, kind of actuators and sensors. They do have this own library and which can be easily uh, pull it out. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So there'll be packages for everything. There'll be camera packages. Okay. There'll be uh, sensor pa different sensor packages. So there would be if a lesser coding write... that we need to we need to do. Yeah, uh, one is lesser code, and another one is it's headless. It's entirely headless. We don't need anything uh, which will be, uh, for example, if if you are running the Raspberry Pi, we need display kind of things. So if yeah. you are running the core rows, we don't need anything. We can uh, directly run it based like uh, very lightweight and high speed. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for this. Help. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sir, so, and one more thing, like I have, I have heard that uh, Rose is the upcoming uh, field. So, uh, can you brief it on that? Rose is upcoming. Like, uh, it is uh, more upcoming and demanded uh, field uh, in like in one to two years or in future. Uh, I have uh, heard that. Uh, actually, uh, Rose is going to be outdated. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, because uh, NVIDIA is came up with an uh, SDK somewhat similar to the ROSE, which means ISAC. Its name is ISAC. You can go through the ISAC. So uh, I, what ISAC is doing, they are combining all together the ROSE platform and the main machine learning course. For example, if we want to make, build an, uh, like, uh, build a facial, facial recognition system inside a robot, we can use uh, ISAC SDK for that. So if you are uh, looking crucially into uh, into an uh, like scalable uh, product company which are in uh, robotics, you can look into uh, ISAC. Okay, thank you. Sir. Yeah, ISAC is an SDK from uh, NVIDIA Jetson. Uh, so you you guys can go through it. It's really uh, really easy to follow, but the initial task, uh, which means the setup the process, is a bit uh, crucial, which is. The, the process, uh, setup process is crucial in both uh, rows and uh, in in uh, in Isaac also. But when it comes to the rows, they are providing uh, providing an UI interface where we can uh, see things, uh, see data, uh, see uh, see camera visuals kind of things. So uh, also there are like a lot of a uh, lot of uh, video contents in YouTube. We'll be able to build a small uh, rows distro package. Uh, and take an action and uh, build a small things inside that. So, uh, yeah, that's about the uh, applied robotics. And actually, there are more things in, in terms of machine learning and and, and I'll give you an, a short uh, one of the crucial thing that we are facing right now. Um, if you uh, the key features that we need need to follow is kind of an like uh, a thing out of the box. That is a, one of the key point because right now uh, our our, uh, our system, for example, uh, internet is full of data and details. But we need to know how we can utilize it and build a, a useful product out of it. So that is a crucial a crucial part. And when it comes to the uh, robotics applications, it's critical thinking is one of the most important things. So, 
So I'll just give you um, what is that product for Burj Khalifa. So uh, we, we we all are known about Burj Khalifa, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is one of the tallest uh, building in, in the entire world right now. And the uh, Burj Khalifa is completely covered with glass. And uh, uh, when I start my career, I was thinking about where I can apply the robotic application, which will be really crucial uh, uh, to do. And at the same time, which is looking to the Burj Khalifa, it's uh, it's an 150 floor uh, 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 vertical building, which is fully covered with glasses. And one of the crucial problem those kind of buildings are, are facing is cleaning those surfaces. So uh, from the beginning itself, those kind of processes are done by the human. And when you go through the uh, uh, YouTube or internet, you can easily find out that there are multiple accidents happening uh, occurred during the cleaning process because there will be heavy wind uh, flow when we are uh, racing up. And at the same time, there will be high humidity over there. So uh, uh, like there are, there are like a, a way that we build that solution right now. We are pitching that into uh a, into uh, uh the light arsening team of Burj khalifa so uh, recently we built a solution for that uh, it's a cleaning board uh, which will be able to uh, clean the high rise buildings uh so uh that is uh, somewhat like we struggled over there for for example we analyze all those processes and uh, uh like how we can build a, a solution which will be adapted for all these scenarios for example, the high-rise building, and there are multiple sectors. When uh, you can look into the uh, structure of Burj Khalifa, it's it's a like uh, what way a semi-pyramidal structure, which means there are uh, there are sections in between each stages, and at the same time, it's the height is really high. And right now, they are cleaning all the entire things with cranes, and they are there are like permanent employees. There are seventy permanent employees working. Uh, like 24 by 7 uh, in a three month shift, for example, they'll clean the building. Uh, for example, they'll clean, start the cleaning from the top to bottom. It will take uh, three months to clean the entire building. Once they have finished the cleaning, they'll, they need to start from the top. So it's an like endless process until the building is standing over there. So they need to clean it entirely again and again and again. So, um, so that is a crucial application over there. In that way, we, we find a solution for that, and uh, we are looking for a patent uh, over there. So in that way, there are like multiple uh, uh, processes uh, which we can uh, deploy our uh, intelligence or, or the robotics intelligence. Uh, and all the solutions are currently available in the market. So what we need to do is, as a solution uh, designer, we need to uh, we need to have the skill which is able to combine multiple things and build a foolproof uh, solution. Uh, so, uh, uh, like right now, uh, like it's it's kind of a discreet discussion. Uh, uh, so, uh, next thing is I just want to give you one more thing. Uh, okay, so yeah, one of my uh, another area that I'm working is designing, designing the solution. Uh, right now, we have been working on a project uh, which is somewhat similar to uh, Boston Dynamics Cheetah. Uh, does anyone go to the video of, of Boston Dynamics? Hello? Yes, sir. we have not. Yeah. yeah, so they have a robot dog, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what we are uh, planning right now is we are building a miniature uh, plan, uh, uh, a miniature robot, which will be able to uh, like where 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 it has computer vision, uh, voice system, and intelligence system. So we can uh, like use it as an a learning platform. Uh, inside that, uh, uh, like inside inside the company right now, we are building a virtual hardware lab, virtual robotics lab where uh, anyone can access that system and they can test uh, all all the parameters for example uh, if you want to buy a jetson nano you need to spend uh, for example 120 dollars 
or if you want to buy an uh, nvidia savior you need to spend uh, $600 so what we are doing is we'll build an uh, infra which have all these things and people or, or people who are into the community can use those infra uh, one at a time so for example if if uh, a process happening like this for example a, a webinar uh, happening uh, in in this critical situations so if you guys want to uh, interact learning interactively through that device it's possible right now so we are looking into that kind of model and i'll just give you a brief um, like can you screen my screen Hello? yes sir. yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, what are you seeing right now? A any idea about it? Hello, guys. So it's a limb. Oh uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a limb. It's so, a limb of the robot. Yeah, it's a limb of the robot. Uh, so we have been designing this thing, uh, uh, and uh, at the same time, we we are prototyping it. Uh, so this is a limb uh, which will have uh, a shoulder, uh, a wrist, and arm. So it's it's an uh, like uh, 3D OF uh, robotics joint. Uh, so when we combine these kind of four things, we'll have an quadruple uh, robot. So I'll, I'll just. This is actually the movement. We'll have an like uh, uh, one uh, 160 degree of rotation in all direction, in all three direction. For example, over here in that way and this way. So we have almost completed the uh, hardware structure over here. Right now we are building the uh, um, like building the core application, which is based on the rows actually. So uh, we are about to open source this uh, this entire project soon uh, once we have uh, built the infrastructure which is needed for these things. And uh, like if you are uh, looking into a core robotic structure, uh, one of the key uh, thing you can look into is designing. If you guys are good in designing, designing is one of the uh, one of the uh, like uh, uh, hot uh, uh, stream uh, in in robotics. Uh, this is uh, just a CAD designing tree. Um, sir, I think I you're... guess, uh, yeah, you have a oh. problem, <laughs> Mr. Ali. I think he's got a network issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely a network issue. Yeah, he left the meeting. Yeah, we'll just uh, have to wait a little bit. These things happen. Yes. Uh, what to do?
Uh, so while we wait, uh, what do you guys think about uh, the information that has been presented so far? Do you like it? Yeah, it was informative. Yeah, there is a feedback form, by the way. So I hope yeah. everyone has filled the feedback form because if you don't fill it, uh, you will not you will not be able to get the certificates, and you will be yes, able yeah. to get the certificates in two days. Within two days. Yes. We will make sure to fill it. Yeah. Hello again, Mr. Ali. Hello. You hear us? Hello. Yeah, can you? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes, yes yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I got, I, I lost my connection. So, uh, we were been discussing about uh, uh, the robot joint, right? Yes. So, so this is the uh, 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 design that we have developed. So one of the core area you can look into is designing, and the second uh, second thing is structural analysis, and the third one is like uh, if you are looking into one uh, like core structure, uh, definitely uh, coding uh, as, as one of the key factor. And uh, there are two streams. Either you can go through uh, go in the way of Python, uh, <coughs> and the second sector is uh, CPD. If you are writing something process oriented or or, or uh, if you want, uh, want to build something really, really fast, definitely to CPP. Right now, we are migrating our all application to CPP, which is um, which will be providing fast, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, faster uh, output based on that. So, uh, as I shown you on on, on my screen uh, about uh, a, a robot joint, this is. Sir, so actually, uh, there, there was a voice break in between. Can you repeat uh, second uh, position where we can go? Like uh, one was Python and uh, second one was. Pardon me. Uh, can you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was asking that uh, there was a voice break in between. Uh, uh, first field was uh, Python and second field was. Uh, can you repeat the name again? Okay. Uh, name. You mean you mean the name? Yes. Sir. Uh, can can you repeat that? Uh, what name? I don't. Uh, I was asking that. Uh, Python and uh, there was a voice break in between. Uh, you were saying something uh, where we can uh, go ahead, go ahead and uh, we can uh, like we can settle in this field. You were saying something. Can you repeat? Okay. That? Yeah. Python and CPP, C plus plus. Okay. Sir. So these are should be able to know. And if you are getting into uh, getting into the uh, machine learning itself. If you are if you are building uh, a really process oriented uh, applications uh, such as as I shown you earlier, uh, definitely C plus plus is the key factor because uh, all the frameworks, for example, if you are looking to machine learning, TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, all the frameworks are supporting CPP because everything is built upon CPP. Uh, so if you are writing natively in CPP, we will get uh, a higher performance rate. So that is a uh, key uh, process. Then. Uh, Yeah. Um, uh, that was, for example, as I told you earlier, the Rose is a framework, and another one is like uh, uh, Isaac is an SDK from uh, NVIDIA Gibson. Then we should be able to uh, have a good understanding about the um, hardware, uh, about the sensors and actuators, how these sensors are communicating. For example, the SPI communication protocol, uh, I2C communication protocol, ESP communication protocol, Wi Fi, uh, uh, LoRa, and those kind of things, how we can integrate, uh, for example. For a particular application, we may not be use Wi-Fi. We we should be able to use uh, uh, Bluetooth. And in on, on, 
uh, or the key, we need to understand uh, the name of the second framework you you said. Okay, sure. Uh, second framework is I S A A C Isaac. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you uh, use uh, Python to develop a robotic uh, system? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. On rows, we are using Python. Uh, 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 for W, I, I have a, a small uh, that is completely built upon Python. And uh, the thing which I which I have shown to you uh, about the exercise tracking robot was just built up on Python, but some tasks are running on CPU. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, it's time to wind up, uh, guys. If you have any questions or or anything, uh, you can put it out, and after that, I'll I'll give you an instruction about the. Uh, uh, about the community. Does anyone have any, any questions? Um, can we, like, can you send us your LinkedIn profile or something so we could stay in touch and uh, ask for help when needed? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So I think uh, uh, the coordination team will have my my LinkedIn profile, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I will send it uh, send it in the chat and in the group as well. Yeah, sure. All uh, right, thank you. And uh, this will be for uh, um, uh, uh, communicate, uh, which will be for communicating and also for, for, uh, uh like if you have any doubt, uh, in terms of robotics, AI, machine learning, we have, uh, like 16 channels in our Discord. So each channels are dedicated for each, uh, each technologies and framework. For example, if you are looking into computer vision, there are channels for computer vision. You can put your questions over there. There will be people from, uh, from, uh, all around the world over there to support you. So I'll share the details uh, about uh, uh, about the community. Uh, uh, the name of the community is Nullcast. You can uh, just on, on the uh, 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 chat. So you can, uh, if you have uh, Discord, Discord is an application. Uh, so if you have a Discord, you can uh, download the Discord and join the Nullcast community. Also, we have a web uh, web community. You can just go through the uh, 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 Nullcast uh, web portal. And if you need any any help in terms of that, you can just uh, uh, get back to me. Okay. So can you share the Discord link in the chat? Uh, pardon me? Hello, sir. Can you share the Discord link in the chat? Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I'll I'll send the Discord link in in, in the uh, chat after it from my other lab. So I'll I'll share that and in, in the uh, I share I'll I'll share that with the coordinators so they'll provide those uh, links to to join. Okay. So, is there any any question, any further questions? Thank you so much. Or else we can. Uh, thank you so much, Editor, for conducting this webinar. I would like to thank Asma for the collaboration and co-moderating with me. It was a really and great honor to collab with you guys for the event. Thank you all for joining the webinar. So it's my Thank pleasure you so much, sir, to give us yeah. your precious yeah. time to enlighten our budding innovators and motivating them. And thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. And I would like to thank the University for this collaboration. It was uh, really an, experience, an amazing experience.
Thank you again. So we have one question from Priyanshu here. Uh, will you use Isaac to control the kinetics of the project you are building? Uh, yeah, there are kinetics packages in, in uh, Isaac. Isaac is actually mainly for uh, for the core uh, AI applications. There are kinetic packages also for that. Is that clear? Yeah, Sashwant is asking uh, at the workshop or something like that. Yeah, definitely. We have a team uh, uh, which will be really, uh, really uh, keen forward to help uh, upcoming people. And at the same time, we are looking for uh, like uh, new talent people uh, towards the company. So, uh, like, if you are a really skillful kind of things, we, we can, like, there's an opportunity to work together. Uh, so, anyway, finally, thank you all. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to this session. Uh, I took the uh, RSA. Yeah. So, thank you, Asman. Thank you. To, uh, 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 Thank you, Mr. Ali. Yeah. So if you have any, any questions, yeah. you can put on. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Thank you, sir. Bush key.